Alright, hello and welcome. This is a presentation on Zanti by me, Nicholas Penning. Uh, so we'll just get uh, get right into it. What is Zanti? Um, Zanti is the Android Network Toolkit, uh, which used to be called Anti, the first penetration testing framework for mobile devices. Um, this application was developed by Itzhak Avram, or Zoc. Um, the CEO and founder of Zimperium. Um, the app is mainly used to pen test computers on a network, not necessarily just mobile devices. Available for the Android OS and Apple iPhone iOS. Um, don't be stuck on the name uh, because the software has been developed for the Apple device as well, so it's not just the Android network toolkit. Um, to further develop um, current success, Zimperium said that um, they're going to slowly start opening source start to slowly open source parts of Zanti. Um, so, so in short, Zanti is a mobile app that allows you to pen test. Now, what kind, or what what can the power of Zanti even do? Um, there's just a list of things there, but uh, mainly search for vulnerabilities, get detailed cloud-based report to fix recognized vulnerabilities, including wise analysts for critical flaws, perform password auth to check for password complexity, find misconfigurations of firewalls by detecting open ports, check if network um, check if a network is vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks, as well as common client-side and server-side vulnerabilities, discover insecure traffic and cookies affecting network privacy, um, and visualizing um, your network by watching captured images uh, record from unsecured network communication. I'm going to go through each um, part of the uh, Zanti app and just kind of skim over them. Um, but first of all, um, this by default, when you load the Zanti app, this is what it's going to show. It's going to start mapping your network as soon as you load the program. Um, which can be good and bad depending on where you're at. Uh, but usually you don't want to start scanning as soon as you open the program. So that's a setting you'll have to adjust. Um, once the scan gets done, it'll actually show the network and what ports are found on the quick scan. Um, by default, it runs a quick scan um, and trying to find the OS. Um, as you can see here, it found uh, a Windows machine. Um, that has five ports open on it. And then... Um, this is just the menu on the left hand side of the screen that you can pull out whenever you need to use it. Um, just some of your basic settings and um, help and all that stuff. Uh, manual port scanning. Um, this is where you can actually set what kind of scans you want to do instead of the default ones when it loads. Um, so the different options, you have different scan types and you can actually execute scripts when you run those scans. And then there's a smart scanning option, um, which will allow you to automatically check for those vulnerabilities, which is um, what you usually want to keep by default. Um, but here's some of the different scan types. You know, you have your intense scans, uh, regular ping scans, quick scans. Um, by default, there's a quick scan with O action. And then there's different scripts that you can run. This is just a handful, um, just a little handful of scripts that can be run uh, when executing a scan. And then this is just the one last option once it goes before the maps and network is you can uh, you know either clear the logs or uh, not. And then you can run intrusive mode if you wish, depending on how stealthy you want to be, of course. Now, the client computer options, um, I'll kind of show you those here. Um, let's click on our vulnerable Windows machine with the IP address of 192. 168.0.27. You see there's three ports open. Um, so when we open that, um, we can see that there's one vulnerability, and then it shows all of our different actions that are available, such as port discovery, establish connection to remote service, replace image, sniffer, man in the middle attack, uh, pen test, the client side, denial of service attacks, password, complexity audit, and then the pen testing the server side. Well, first of all, we can look at the established connections. The different ports that were open actually shows as what we can connect to. Um, using a program such as ConnectBot um, will allow you to uh, connect to these ports if you have the proper credentials. And that's where the password cracker comes in, which I will uh, talk about uh, here in just a little bit. Replace image. Um, the purpose of this tool is to demonstrate packet manipulation by showing different images. Um, I tried running this 
and at first um, it showed that uh, the bind failed and maybe might have a firewall or something blocking um, the traffic. Um, but then I looked in the logs eventually and it said that the image was replaced. So I don't know if it does work or doesn't work. I guess I really haven't looked much into it. Um, but uh, that's pretty much uh, that uh, in a nutshell there. And sniffing. This was the coolest part of the app that I really enjoyed. Um, the ease of just sniffing traffic was just insane. Um, so right now you can see that uh, right now it says it's sniffing the traffic on uh, the dot seventeen address, and um, you can see down there Zanti has been granted super user permissions for an interactive shell. So you do need red access when you run uh, this uh, specific tool. Um, once we run it, I went to uh, just a Neopet on the dot twenty one IP address, and what I found. Um, was just it was an unsecure website and I just used the username and password just a random username and password a few times and look you can actually see the passwords and stuff um, that was sniffed out uh, from uh, from that non-secure website um, so obviously if it's HTTPS it's not going to work but in HTTP protocol it's going to be um, really easy to sniff passwords out um, you can see that um, the username ben owned ben at owned com and uh, no password were the uh, first usernames and then the second one, or username and password, and then the second one uh, was Nicholas and uh, password one. And you can actually see what IP address it was from as well. Um, and now, uh, moving on, man, the middle filters, um, this is just another type of uh, test for your penetration testing toolkit. Um, the first thing is the different attack types. Um, those are just shown there. You got your ARP and your ports, uh, and then those options there. And then you have the different types of filters, and this is where it gets kind of cool. Um, you can actually put in custom filters that you can select from a text file of some type, um, or you can just replace the images or drop HTTPS to HTTP, which would be huge. You know, dropping to an unsecure website and then using that sniffer, obviously, and finding. Um, you know those passwords or whatever it may be. Uh, there's also a well, denial of service uh, to the target and there's also redirecting HTTP to the local host. Um, so like I said, those are just some of the filters you can use when you're uh, testing the man in the middle um, attacks. Now I'm looking at the pen testing the client side. Um, credits are what uh, credits are what the Z anti program uses to exploit shells and uh, things of that nature. Um, usually buy credits. That's how they usually make money with this app. Um, so I went and I uh, selected my pen test the client side and then I said okay use a credit if it works. Um, unfortunately I did not get an exploit through the client side. Um, there's two built-in client side attacks which is Java Zero Day and IE789 EXEC command. Um, I ran them for the heck of it. They tried injecting the exploit but it sat there for Oh, quite a while, and nothing would ever happen. So I figured that this uh, client side attack did not uh, did not uh, succeed. Uh, password complexity audit. Um, this is another sweet tool. Uh, it actually, you know, it's just a basic password cracker. Um, you have two different options. You know, you have your cracking method, and then the automatic mode, which you know just attacks or cracks uh, any of the protocol. Um, any of the protocols that were found. Um, so for the cracking methods, you just have your different dictionaries, small, optimized, big, huge, um, incremental, even dictionaries. So you can actually use your own dictionary that you have, which can be um, of great use. Um, and this is just an example of when it goes to crack, let's say a service like SSH. Um, this is what it looks like. And if it succeeds, then you will have a, a, you know, a prompt saying that um, the password was found and it would show the credentials and then you can actually select that link and um, connect to that remote service using like I said a program before such as ConnectBot. And then testing the uh, server side, uh, any of the vulnerabilities that are there. Um, the one that was found here um, was actually uh, um, an MS0867 um, which is where the vulnerability can allow remote code execution if an affected system received a specific, especially crafted RPC request. Um, I 
failed at this one. I tried doing it. Um, as you can see, it started to attack, and I was getting really excited, but unfortunately, um, something happened in my attack timed out, and um, I was not successful in uh, grabbing any of those, uh, you know, any of those payloads that you kind of see there. Um, those include um, grabbing a screenshot, running command prompt, ejecting the CD, getting the process list, and you're running calc.exe, and there might be a few more than that, but those are the ones that I can see um, that were available. Unfortunately, I could not use any of them. And then, where can you get this sweet app? Uh, you can get it from the zantiapp.com forward slash zanti.html. Um, that's the website you can go to get the Zanti app. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with the basic, but like I said, you're going to need Red Access to do that. Um, the server version will probably be the way to go. You won't get support, but you'll get some credits to play around with. Uh, I went with a goal just because I want to mess around with a lot more and then want that support so I can actually, you know, figure out uh, how exactly the app works um, to the T. Um, you know, uh, and then the Platinum version obviously is uh, a little bit more pricey, but you get, uh, you know, you get a pre-release pre uh, version. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, just email me, uh, nfpenning at pluto.dsu.edu, um, and then you can also check out those different sources that I use there. Um, and that is it. All right. Thank you.